Rebound exclusive. All right, Chris here with uh, Brewbound.com, and today I am joined by a very special guest here on the on the rooftop, uh, La Barreria at Italy in New York. Nicola, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. So, uh, what's this like, man? Italian guy here in New York City. You're one of three partners here at Italy, sort of living the dream in the craft beer world. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, it's amazing for me, also because I'm not only a partner of the business, but I'm very, very, I'm a beer lover. I started in Italy with beer, in the beer department, and I got the beer buyer, and then I started opening up our Italy's, and I opened up with the one in Bologna, and then I came here to open this one in New York. So for me, it's, you know, it's, it's two times nice, because first of all, it's my business, I open up my business, and second of all, I'm finally developing a constant all-around beer, which for me is amazing. Okay, now we have 12 stores. We have six in Italy, five in Japan, and one here in New York. Okay, and they're, and they're mostly like uh, markets where you get your produce and all that stuff, as well as restaurants, or explain that to me. They are all different, okay. because we get bored and do all the time all the same stuff. Right. So we have uh, three or four, very, very close to the like in New York, more or less the same dimension. One actually is twice bigger, okay. and we do more or less the same. Then we have one incredible small in Bologna, which is actually a bookstore. Right. And we cook something in the middle. In uh, Milano, it's very, very small. It's only kind of a boutique. You can only buy, you cannot eat. It's a three and a half barrel brewery with two seven barrel uni tanks and no bright beer tanks, meaning right after fermentation, this beer, very, very fresh, goes right in the serving vessel or firkin where we dose in the yeast, it recarbonates and we serve it right out of the, the firkin just after fermentation. There's Brooks, he's the head brewer of Italy. Uh, this is Chris. And Brooks apprenticed at Teo's Brewery, at Leo's Brewery and at Dogfish. Uh, and learned with all three of us. And he's a great brewer and he's going to be the, the guy when you come through this window uh, that'll be in here making the, making the beer. Uh, I worked at Beer de Borgo, which is one of the participating breweries for the Birria, uh, along with uh, Baladan, which is the other Italian brewery, and Dogfish Head from Delaware. Um, I started working for Beer de Borgo about two and a half years ago. And after a little, after working there for a little bit, this kind of project started to be a little bit more than a rumor. So uh, Leonardo asked me if I wanted to be the <clears throat> resident brewer, the everyday, day-to-day -day brewer here, and I, of course, I accepted. I think that during the brewing process here in the, in the rooftop brewery will be always to combine all the American and the Italian uh, beer culture and all the Italian and American ingredients. So it will be nice to make always this combination just for making uh, always a marriage between the uh, U U.S. beers, American beers and Italian beers. Everybody back in Europe is talking about you guys and all these new things you do, which is awesome. So that is very important. Second of all, I believe this is going to be a little different because this is going to be a place where American beer and Italian beer are going to meet each other and they are very different. They are very, very different. The way we are doing beer right now is much more like a Sam Calagione way to do. It's much more, you know, meeting different elements together like wine, beer, fruit, all oak, a lot of age. Uh, while here we have maybe more hop, more bitter. Uh, today we, we were just making a small trip in the, in the store um, uh, at the um, uh, bottom floor and uh, we just was, we were picking the most interesting ingredients in the, in the place. So we found a, spe in, um, a special kind of fruit called the ugly fruit. It was like a, a crossing between a grapefruit and a lemon, but uh, a little bit sweeter than grapefruit and a little uh, less sour in respect of the lemon. This is very nice, very aromatic. And we found also a, um, a good ginger, so we decided to make this a special like uh, uh, light amber and uh, about 7% of alcohol beer with uh, aromatized with the ginger with the, the agri fruit and we will add also some honey and we will add um, uh, orange honey and um, 
Eucalyptus Mare, so for having this uh, special character. And the idea there is so the ginger, you know, and the ugly fruit were probably grown here somewhere in the States. And then, but the eucalyptus honey is, is from Italy, and the eucalyptus honey works in concert with the ginger. And then the orange blossom honey, also from Italy, works in concert with the ugly fruit. So all the ingredients are speaking to each other. We, we, we were talking with Sam for this big project, and Sam, after one second, we were telling about this stuff, he said, that before we finish it to tell the, the story, he said, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> and so that's, uh, that's how the project started about... Uh, and then we love the idea of marrying high-end food with high and beer. I mean, in general, when we sat down with Mario and Joe Bastianich, we're in a very, we're on a rooftop, very high up Italian. What do you think of the, as high in, the, in Italy as the Alps? So the food, Mario's menu, is really about celebrating the Alps cuisine, like the beers, very rustic and simple ingredients. Um, all of these beers are unfiltered, unpasteurized, but also naturally carbonated. So it's almost like uh, slow beer, uh, you know, combined with slow food. The brewing knowledge we, we have here, having Sam Calagione, Teo Musso, and uh, Leonardo Di Vincenzo, will allow us to be creative, experiment, but also not uh, overdo things or do things that you know, won't turn out to be, you know, too great. I mean, I, th I think that all three of the participating breweries and the project have experimented enough in their, in their respective brewing careers that um, we, we're going to be okay with experimenting a little bit, a little bit at a time, not overdoing things and doing new creative. Brew. Yeah, we think this is the only brew pub that we know of, at least in Italy or the U.S., where 100% of the brewery production goes into beer engine casks. So it's a pretty unique feature about the, this brewery. And the Birria Rome will probably have some cask beer, but and other, right? Regular, some other more keg beer, right? Well, we serve kegs from our, our breweries and other, other great Italian and American craft breweries, regular kegs, but those come from off-site. Uh, brewing Cascale is, uh, of course, a little different because uh, you can't really... Um, you, you really have to count on your raw ingredients, all your spices, they have to be super good ingredients because I believe that CO2 sometimes helps the, the beer a little bit and its aromas and things. And with you, when you have a lightly carbonated beer served at a little warmer temperature, you really need to have very good raw materials. Yeah, let's go out and look at, uh, you know, the, the, the food's going to be amazing. We, we're confident the beer is going to be darn good, but both are going to pale in comparison to the view. Uh, this is just a really uh, magical, a magical spot. Uh, so, very simple, elegant setup. We have a friend of mine, uh, Moro, owns a, a beautiful uh, design company in Florence. Uh, Teo did the design on the fonts uh, and, the, and this artwork. And then my friend in Florence made these hand stamped beer engine shields. But the caster in a special refrigerator underneath. And uh, that is kept a little less cold than regular keg beer at cellar temperature. And they're naturally hand pulled uh, without the introduction of CO2. So I mean, we, I think internationally, we all believe that a rising tide floats all ships. And if we can help each other, uh, in, symbolically with collaboration, but every day in terms of introducing more people to how great craft beer pairs with great food. That's the most enjoy, and that's the part of the job I love the most. I don't want to speak for you guys, but that's what I'm most excited about.